So I research governance. And when I talk about governance, I'm really talking about political and institutional relationships, including those of power and knowledge. And um, this is important because governance plays a really important role in empowering or disempowering socio-ecological transformations that we're talking about today. So the provocative tagline for this conference is how do we feed 9 billion people without wrecking the planet? And for me, this is a fundamentally social and political question. It's about making tough decisions at the expense of other choices. So we're here because we agree on the need for sustainability transformations across food systems. And we know that we're already at risk of crossing key planetary boundaries, but we have to also talk about social principles. Now, Raworth has proposed the donut. It's a playful but serious approach to thinking about this challenge. The donut puts social priorities into the discussion about planetary boundaries. It brings social and environmental concerns together and sets a vision for a just and sustainable future. So the donut framework is useful for governance particularly because it presents target corridor and it offers the possibility for multiple pathways forward. Now it's clear that a focus on a diversity of pathway solutions as opposed to a one-track approach is central to sustainability transformations. So the current governance of food has failed. And it's failed to support pathways inside the donut. So governance scholars tend to agree that the current architecture of food governance is not adequate for a host of reasons that include fragmentation, overlapping uh, mandates, contested priorities, policy silos, competing understandings and objectives, economic interests, and an unreflexive commitment to productionist approaches. So there's a lot of problems here. So in global food security policy, what I study, for example, solutions tend to promote increased production, but ignore evidence that hunger is often an issue of access and entitlement, and not a question of limited availability. So the question becomes, what can we do as scientists to support donut governance? And I want to take inspiration from Andy Sterling's work and say we need to keep it complex. But while we talk about complexity, we present our solutions in really simplified ways. And the problem is that by presenting our findings with narrow ranges of uncertainty, we restrict possibilities for donut governance. So a review in 2010 of 63 equivalent peer-reviewed articles showed that the, um, about the costs and impacts of energy technologies, it showed that there were narrow ranges of uncertainty across all these papers. But when taken together, there was no consensus across the literature. So without accounting for complexity and uncertainty in our findings, we contribute to a body of literature that can justify almost any policy decision as being science-based. Uh, science so why else do we need to keep it complex? Three reasons. First. Food security, nutrition, and sustainability are dynamic concepts. They evolve with the, on the basis of new scientific discoveries, a changing planet, and changing socio-cultural values, norms, and interpretations. Second, we all want our work to have impact, but there's evidence to suggest that a single definitive representation of science is more vulnerable to manipulation and more open than more open representations. So, Plural conditional approaches are not immune to manipulation, but they can make political pressure more visible. And evidence is emerging that in policy dialogues, plurality supports more positive outcomes and more diversity of solutions. Now the third reason to keep things complex is something that we've talked about already today. And it's about avoiding these unhelpful dogmas or dualisms. Good, bad, peasant, Monsanto, organic, GMO, but we haven't talked about why it's bad to talk in these kind of dogmatic ways. And the argument is that such approaches result in a moralistic condemnation of the powerful. So this makes for really good headlines. But in practice, it limits the scope of debate and discussion, and we need to be having these debates about the future development of multiple pathways through the complex, fuzzy mess of institutional relationships that organize our world. So to maintain complexity is to enhance democratic deliberation. Transition pathways that operate inside the donut require good governance, 
and good governance requires science that is honest about complexity. It also means that it's essential to recognize the potential impacts of our science when it leaves our labs and our offices. Furthermore, it requires that we understand that by doing science and by trying to understand and provide solutions to problems, we're engaging in politics. So this is a call. It's a call to target ideological, economic, and political assumptions and forces that mediate our science, policy, and food systems. It's a call to voice the sense of urgency we feel and to share our science in all its complexity and ambiguity. It's a call for those of us who work on policy and with policymakers to push for a change in governance culture, away from absolute truths towards engagement with multiple sciences and perspectives to promote better pathways. It's about doing the best science we can, maximizing our search for understanding, and then working with other scientists, and importantly, non-scientists, to better understand the potential limitations, opportunities, and implications of our work. And yes, this is really scary, because it's not what we have been trained to do, and it certainly means conflict and making tough decisions. But to support donut governance, we need to acknowledge the political nature of our work. And while our science might not be explicitly political, the interpretations and applications necessarily are. Thank you. <laughs>